Welcome to the setup tour. Little bit of a different setup tool than you're probably used to seeing. I'm gonna take the mask off though because I don't want to spend the rest of the video uh, wearing this stuff, but I don't mind wearing the full white suit. Uh, I just opened the door as well to some Amazon guy and um, his reaction, my god, the guy looked at me like I'm a crazy person because I'm I was wearing the mask, I was wearing you know this full white freaking suit. He probably thought I'm an actual crazy person. Anyway, let's do the full setup tour as there have been a few little changes here and there that I don't think I've mentioned in any videos. So we're gonna cover, of course, all the peripherals, all the bits and pieces inside of this setup right here as it has changed over the recent couple of months. We've added new monitors. I've kind of moved some things about. We've got some new mice, a new microphone, webcam. Time to cover all that stuff. In case you've kind of not been watching any of my previous videos, you're gonna find out what's new in this one. All right, let's get started. We can begin with the chair of choice for the setup. This is the GT Omega Sport. It is by far my favorite chair from their lineup that I've tried so far. We do have another chair though uh, over in storage that I have to build. It's their new Element series. And by the way, if you want to go buy anything from GT Omega, like this entire chair for your own setup, you can use code TECHBLOCK for 5% off your entire order. Moving on from the chair though, over here we have the Razor Chroma mug holder. And yes, this is like the real one. So we got the uh, chroma stand itself. And when you put your cup on there, the wave effect begins. At least that's what I've configured mine to do. You can of course configure yours within Razer Synapse 2. Every, I think 10 minutes or so that you've not drank water or picked this thing up basically, it's gonna start blinking green, telling you like, hey, drink your water, man. Uh, just kind of reminds you to stay hydrated, my guy. But as for the headset of choice in the setup, we got the Razer Nari Ultimate. Still using this pair of headphones, still liking them. And I've even added a little bit of a headset upgrade, I would say. But we basically have this retractable magnetic, and I really do mean retractable because you can pull it out. It's very nice. And it's got a magnet, dude. So I've made my life very, very easy. Also, I'm trying to record this literally with just one hand. But... I've made my life very easy when it comes to charging the headset now. So if you look here, I've got this little magnetic dongle that when this thing gets close, boom, my headset suddenly charging via a magnet, dude. It's the best thing ever. This is honestly made charging these headphones so easy. And once you're done, you just pull the cable a little bit and boom, it's gone. But this is genuinely the best upgrade I've ever done to my headset and I'd highly recommend you guys do it as well. I'll leave a link down below in the description to that retractable micro USB cable. That's also magnetic, it's the sickest thing ever. And not only do you get the micro USB magnetic tip, you also get a USB type C and a lightning tip as well. So you can charge pretty much anything you want using that magnetic cable, which is retractable because you definitely want that for cable management reasons. But yeah, that's my headset. The headset sits on top of the Razer Chroma headset stand. We've got the Colo lights up there, which are pretty much just like RGB lights, which are sick, dude. We've got some tech block stickers on there. Does it have RGB? And then the tech block drip logo there that I'm currently using as like the channel main logo. But yeah, man, we've got some cool lights up here. As for the monitors, this right here is the MSI Mag 272CQR, 1440p, 165Hz. It's lovely, man. Really, really nice monitor. There's VA panels right here. One millisecond response time. But bear in mind, it is a VA panel, so there might be a little bit of ghosting involved. But really nice monitors nevertheless. They're pretty decent for the price, in my opinion. So I've got a total of two of them right here. Massive shout out to MSI, of course, for setting those out. On top of the monitors, one of the newest additions is the Razer Kayo. I've kind of wanted to get into streaming a lot more recently and I needed a webcam. So I reached out to Razer and I'm like, yo, I wanna start streaming. Can you send over some equipment? So they sent over their Razer Kayo, which actually surprised me how good of a webcam that actually is. When you set it to 1080p, like it genuinely looks really high quality to my surprise for a webcam. So very happy with that one. And as for the mic of choice, we got the Razer Siren X. I think this is their most budget microphone, but Razer sent this over as well. I've even ordered a Rode microphone arm and a pop filter for the microphone. 
but Amazon said it's gonna arrive on April 25th. Now bear in mind I ordered it over a week ago. I hope this pandemic goes away and things just go back to normal because my god I order so much stuff on Amazon. They better not shut Amazon down. That would be very bad. But yeah, uh, delivery's on the way for the microphone arm. I would have set it up already, but it's kind of been delayed by a month. Not usually uh, something you see when you order things on Amazon. They don't usually get delayed by, you know, a month. But yeah, I've got a mic arm and a pop filter on the way. And as for where I'm going to be putting the mic arm, I'm thinking probably behind the main monitor here on the right. So I'm going to probably put the mic arm behind there, kind of like, you know, going over top and the mic will be like pointing down at me type of stuff. So yeah, that's kind of the plan with the mic. Now, if we take a look at my peripherals right here, we got the Elgato Stream Deck, lovely macro pad right here. I use this thing every single day. I love it. And we got the Razer Huntsman Elite. This is my keyboard of choice. Here's a little sound test for you as well. It's genuinely a very nice keyboard. It's got the Razer purple switches in here that are like optomechanical. They're lovely and they feel nice. They sound nice. I love this keyboard, plus it has crazy amounts of RGB lighting. As for the mouse mount, we've got the Razer Firefly V2, paired with my main mouse of choice, still the Razer Viper Ultimate. And as for my secondary mouse, which I should probably now swap over, uh, we've got the Razer Basilisk here, the Basilisk Ultimate. So they both share the exact same charging dock. So when my Razer Viper runs low on battery, I'll swap over to the Basilisk Ultimate. And eventually, once that one charges up, I'll swap back over to the Viper. We got the Razer Chroma wireless charger here as well, currently charging up my phone. And I don't know if any of you saw the edit at the start of the video. Hopefully you did, but I've got this cool wallpaper that once you like press and hold, it's kind of like your PC internals, but on your phone. And it's somewhat animated. I found it online, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, I downloaded some weird app to get it installed, but yeah, pretty cool wallpaper here and of course, the Razer Chroma charger is fully RGB, so when a device is not on it, it won't be, you know, lighting up doing wave effects. But once you put a phone on top of the wireless charger, but you got to really line it up. Don't let me down. So there you go. Phone charging and boom, full rainbow wave effect. And yeah, that's pretty much all this area covered. You know, we got the charging dock right here for the mouse, all really nicely cable managed. We got this device right here beneath the two monitors. This is the Lemetric Time Clock. It does have a glowing Razer logo here. Oh God, COVID-19. And then we got a YouTube sub counter. So I'm sure you've seen these things in previous videos or other YouTubers setups as well. It's a very nice clock, really expensive for what it is, unfortunately. By the way, link in description down below to literally everything in this setup, including the PC internals, which we'll get to in a second. But if you wanna go check out or buy any other stuff in this setup, especially during this time, uh, you can do so, check it out on Amazon. What about the PC? What am I rocking inside here? So we got the Ryzen 7 2700X CPU inside of here, second gen Ryzen, eight cores, 16 threads. Mine's currently overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz across all the cores. Uh, it's running pretty cool, thanks to the Deepcool Castle 360EX RGB liquid cooler that you can see right there. It's a 360 millimeter radiator and you know, all in one liquid cooling kit basically, but we got the uh, Lian Li Bora digital fans on here, all aluminium, they look lovely and they got some very nice RGB lighting, as you can see. Lian Li also sat out the entire case for the PC build. This is the Lian Li PC 011 Dynamic Razer Edition. And inside of this PC, we got nine of Lian Li's fans, as well as their RGB cables that you've probably already noticed and are wondering, where can I get those? Because they look freaking amazing. So we got some RGB cables in there. They're the Streamer Plus. Bear in mind though, these are the Plus models, not the original Streamer. So if you want to go buy these cables and you want them to look like that, make sure you buy the Streamer Plus, not the original Streamer, okay? And as for everything else inside of here, we got 32 gigs of RAM from T-Force. We got an RTX 2060, uh, two terabytes of NVMe storage. One of the drives actually, as you can see right there, it's actually an RGB M.2 drive, which I just made a video about. So if you want to go watch a full video about an RGB M.2 drive, you can do, press on the card somewhere on the screen right now. But yeah guys, that's the setup at the moment. We got this, a footstool at the bottom as well. Bought that on Amazon, I think a couple weeks ago. It's actually been pretty nice now having a footstool in my setup. The only kind of like problem, I suppose, is 
the center leg in my table. To be honest, the middle leg doesn't bother me that much, but now that we have a footstool there, I'd kind of prefer if it wasn't there, if you kind of get what I mean. But yeah, uh, as for the table that we're actually using, because I know some of you are going to ask me, this is the IKEA Linmon. It's a very, very cheap desk, 200 centimeters in total length, but it's a pretty nice desk for the most part. Uh, the only problem with it is, I guess, it can get damaged very easily. So bear that in mind, but it's pretty cheap. And if you don't feel like splashing a couple hundred pounds on a desk, I feel like this is a very good option. It's pretty cheap and definitely gets the job done. Uh, I've had this table for coming up to one year now. It suffered minimal damage, surprisingly enough, and for the most part, it's held up really well. So good desk, but I do kind of get roasted every now and again for still using an IKEA Linmon desk, which is like dirt cheap in this, I'd say pretty decently high-end setup at this point, but should probably upgrade the desk at some point to something a little bit better. I really do like sit-stand desks and I have one literally right here, but this one ain't big enough and there's no way I could fit two monitors and a PC on here. So what I need is like a two meter sit-stand desk, but it's a little bit difficult to kind of find that kind of desk online, if you know what I mean. But yeah, that's been the setup tour guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully everyone's like staying safe, staying at home, not buying all the toilet paper in all the stores, because my god, there's, there's no toilet paper anywhere. But yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching once again. Link in description down below to everything in the setup here if you want to go buy it yourself. But I'm going to get going. Let me know if you guys want to see some live streams of Mountain Blade Bannerlord 2. Because I've been doing nothing but playing that game recently. It came out and oh my god, I downloaded that game straight away. I've never purchased a game on Steam faster than when Mountain Blade 2 came out. I've been waiting for that game for years and years. I've heard rumors that it's gonna come out in 2020, it's gonna come out in 2019, but here we are in March 2020, or now April 2020, and finally Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord is available. I've got a level 10 character, oh wait, no, level 11 character now, so if you guys wanna see some sick live streams of us running around, chasing forest bandits and all sorts of other stuff, let me know and I'll be sure to live stream Mountain Blade. All right, I'm gonna get going. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.